guys name number one, two, two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. As we continue our series looking at every main set in the game, and today's set is Tactical Evolution, or something like that. We are almost through GX. I cannot wait. They are, uh... They're starting to test me. And as with every other list, we're gonna do our best look at the list as a set in and of itself, but we need to also consider outside or future support because it's just that time in Yu-Gi-Oh! And the order on today's list is actually gonna be a little different. Instead of arguing theory for every card and trying to make some sort of uh, determination or quantification of like just how good a card is based on how me and the Discord generally feel about the card, instead I have ordered all of the cards on today's list by how many tops they've gotten at major tournaments. This is probably the most objective way you can do this. Again, it's not perfect because I'm pretty sure Yu-Gi-Oh! Tops.com or whatever it's called, the website I used, doesn't have literally every single time a card's ever topped it. I'm pretty sure it's pretty good, but this errors once in a while and things like that. But in general, it's a good, it's a pretty solid and objective way of ordering the cards. Especially because there was no like banned cards this time around. So we got to actually be fun with this list. I don't remember the number of tops off the top of my head, but maybe I will display them on the screen. Uh, when I am, uh, going through the post-editing process. I think that'd be kind of cool. I'll do that. I'll do that. So anyway, without further ado, let's go with number 10. Number 10 is Hunter Dragon. Hunter Dragon's a level 3 Dark Dragon Vanilla monster that has the following no effect because it's a vanilla. This dragon has taken down countless prey with its sharp fangs. It strikes very quickly because it does not strike first. It is vulnerable because if it does not strike first, it is vulnerable to counterattack. I think that's because it's got like no defense. It has 1700 attack and 100 defense. Uh, it's a beat stick. It's also one of the best level 3 beaters we have. So that's a thing. Uh, I think Cyberdark used it a little bit. And I do know off the top of my head this has never actually gotten a top. At least uh, nothing that was recorded. So zero. <clears throat> However, just looking at the card, we can at least say that as a beater and as a vanilla monster, it's still okay. Number nine is Symbols of Duty. Send one normal monster you control to the graveyard to target one monster in either player's graveyard. Special summon that target and equip that this card to that target. When this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. Obviously, it's it's no Monster Reborn uh, or Premature Burial, however, the fact that it can grab a monster from either player's grave gives it some advantage over Premature, and uh, sending a monster from your field to the graveyard isn't the worst cost. Obviously, it's a normal monster, which is kind of lame, but uh, I don't know. In the right deck, it's a pretty solid little combo piece, and uh, if you're playing something like, I don't know, Genix, Undyne or something to mill a card and then you have to just get this dumb Gen X controller You have no other better use for except maybe a lure of darkness or something like that you do you, There's there is times where you have vanilla monsters in your deck because they're like garnets But they're in the deck like Garnet himself or something. so Okay, sure, and if you have like a dedicated vanilla deck the, it's it's probably got some fun things you can do with it Not a bad card not much to say about it because again <laughs> zero tops Number seven is Venomanaga, the uh, deity of poisonous snakes. Ah, yes, Venoms were in this set. Um, Venoms stink, they're bad. However, their main boss monster is arguably okay. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must first be special summoned by the effect of Rise of the Snake Deity, is that what it's called? Which is a trap card. Ew. She is unaffected by and cannot be targeted by spell, trap, or monster effects. Wow, she's uh, she's quite the towers now, ain't she? She gains 500 attack for each reptile monster in your graveyard. So, you know, she got zero attack unless you got a, a, a nice full graveyard. We have, we have, oh, uh, eh. That requires some setup, but okay, anyway, keep going. If this card is destroyed by battle, you can banish a reptile monster from your graveyard to special summon this monster back to the field. So she's a little hard to kill. You, you gotta you gotta kill her a couple times to really get rid of her. But she's getting smaller every time. And when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can place one hyper venom counter on this card. When it's got three on it, you win the duel. She's got a win condition. Cool! Is this card good? Well, it's Summoning condition is as follows. First, you must have Venomanon, the king of poisonous snakes, on board. He cannot be special summoned by other monsters' effects. He gets 500 for every uh, reptile again. And when he's destroyed by battle, you can do the same uh, special summony thing. So you gotta get him on board first. Okay, level 8, zero, 0, 
Th thanks, Konami. All right, next step. You need to activate Rise of the Snake Deity, the trap card mentioned in Venomonaga's effect. The only thing that can special summon her. When a face-up Venomanon is destroyed, except by battle, you can special summon her. So it, all it does is, is, is summon her. Ah, uh, benefits? Well, um, he can summon himself back if he was killed by battle, so you can force your opponent to try to get rid of this thing by any other means. However, if your opponent has any knowledge of the cards at all, they're gonna know not to destroy this thing, by, okay, but okay. Sure, you managed to somehow cheese this thing on board, somehow also have the trap card. You've now managed to summon Venom and Aga. After going through all those hoops, you now have a monster that's nigh unkillable. That's, that's pretty good, except by battle. So if you don't have a very full graveyard and she's not very strong, your punch is going to jam over her, but uh, presumably, in a perfect scenario, you manage to do all of that other crap, and then you've summoned this thing, and she's got like 3k attack. Your opponent's going to have a hard time getting rid of her, except for Akaiju in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. And then, she's got to do battle damage three times, so that's another three turns, and then you win the duel. Zero tops. <laughs> Some people were arguing whether or not she was even deserving to be on the list, or if she was one of the best cards in the in, on the list entirely, simply because of the theory Oh, Her effect is about as good of an effect in this game as you can get. You really can't get an effect that's better than win the duel. That's whoop, that's literally the best effect a card can have. Because you could even argue that it's better than the match winners, which aren't even legal so that they don't even count. But if they did count, uh, they're, they need to reduce your life points by battle to win the match and your opponent can just like scoop so it's like super hard to resolve those but i guess it's kind of better if we're not if we're ignoring activation conditions i don't know but arguably i would say the best effect in the game is simply to win the duel it doesn't matter you could draw your entire deck it's not as good as winning the duel because you just won so that that's what it is there's no more duel after that. So she's got a very, very high power ceiling. Plus the fact that she's next to unkillable is also extremely notable, especially at this time in the game, because we had less removal than we do now. If we didn't have kaijus. So she'd be a pain in the booty. I'm sure you could still lava goal on her if your opponent also had something else on board, but okay, so she's hard to get rid of. However, we're in that age old discussion that power ceiling versus consistency, consistency almost always trumps it. She's next to impossible to summon. Uh, you have to go through too many loops. It's really hard to play her. So it's at least nice to see that if you can actually manage to get her on the field, she's kind of worth it because she's really good. Next up with like eight or so tops is gift card. Gift card is a normal trap card that reads, your opponent's life points are increased by 3,000. In a bubble, this card would be literally one of the worst cards in the game. It's a neg one for you, and your opponent just gains life points. Sure, life points don't matter that much, but you certainly don't want to lose card advantage to give your opponent life points. There's no reason to really to do that. Unless you're playing Nurse Burn, Nurse Wreck Field the Fallen One, or whatever her Dark World Errata is. I refuse to call her that, because mostly because I just don't really remember. Dark Dark Lord Nurse Wreck Field, I think? I don't know. I don't really care. And the continuous trap card bad reaction to Smochi, Death to Smoochie, both basically say, uh, uh, to paraphrase, if your opponent would gain life points, they lose them instead. So you cheese your opponent by activating three gift card with one of those two other cards in the field, and you do 9k damage, and you win the duel. It's cheesy, but it's topped like eight times, so it's worth the mention. Next up with like nine tops, so one more than the gift card. I actually do remember some of these. I should have said that at the beginning. Ill Blood! Interesting thing about Ill Blood though is he got most of his tops like when he came out, whereas Gift Card got most of its tops like much later in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. So do those tops earlier count more than those tops now? I don't know. I, I would assume that tops now count better because you have to assume that everything's power crept, everything else. So all cards, or most cards now are better than most cards then. So a top now is better than a top earlier. Topflation? Ill Blood's a Gemini monster, ew! This side actually introduced Geminis, um, so that's a thing of, I, I should probably mention, I guess. But Ill Blood's actually got a good effect. As a level six dark zombie, he's not the easiest thing to get on board, but he is a zombie after all, so okay, fine. Assuming you manage to special summon him to the field, you can then blow your normal summon on what they call a Gemini summon. It's kind of a fan term. Basically, you normal summon a monster that's already on the field. Only Geminis can do it. It's terrible, but when you do that, they gain an effect. They're considered a non-effect monster until you normal summon them again. It's the weirdest mechanic, I think, in the game. It's also one of the worst because 
needing the normal summon a monster twice is a great way to make a deck bad because you can only get one normal summon a turn so it takes you two turns for your monster to do anything unless you cheese it out or have supervise or some other other card effect so that's terrible and dumb but anyway his effect like i said is pretty good it makes up for the fact that he's a clunky gemini monster once per turn you can special summon one zombie monster from your hand or from either player's graveyard presumably because you're playing zombie world so your opponents all their monsters in their grave are zombie when he leaves the field you kill all the monsters summoned by him but whatever in a slow control format you could probably just keep summoning crap like with ill blood like even if you do it during main phase two kill one of your opponent's guys and you got zombie world on board summon it back to your side of the field and just keep going so slowly but surely you're just gonna keep rolling advantage until your opponent's got nothing and at 2100 effect or 2100 effect 20 on 2100 attack he's not the weakest thing in the world so he's at least a respectable beat stick of himself so he can kill stuff that gives him his own fuel in the graveyard He's okay. His artwork is freaky. That's fun. He would be higher on the list because his effect is actually really solid if it wasn't for the fact that he was a Gemini monster. Elemental hero Neos Alias. The second Gemini, I think the last one on the list, right? Yes. Alias is a weird one because yes, he is a Gemini monster, but pretty much he only saw play because he's a level 4 light hero monster with 1900 attack, so he's a beater. But when you Gemini summon him, he becomes Elemental Hero Neos. So you can use him uh, for fusion material, presumably. For all those Neos fusions that need Neos, but he's a level 7 vanilla, so he's harder to play. So this thing's a level 4, but it takes two turns to make it Neos, or or one turn and supervisor or something, you know. So it's, I think it was in theory to make those fusions easier to make by giving you a level four version of Neos. But uh, yeah, he was pretty much just used because he was a level four like hero monster. Later, we once we finally got the masked heroes, you used, you made him with, what, Koga? Is it Koga the one you make with this thing? So that's why you ran him to make Koga. He's got a ton of tops though. That's sporadic through the history of since he came out. Uh, but again, it's always been for what he is, not what he does. But anyway, okay, keep going. Zombie Master! Here we go. Good cards. Zombie Master is a level 4 dark zombie monster with the following effect. Once per turn, you can discard one monster to special summon one level 4 or lower zombie monster from either player's graveyard. He must be on the field face up to resolve this effect. So if he leaves the field after he activated his effect, Solemn Strike. He would fail to resolve. The cool thing about Zombie Master is, again, just like all the other zombie world-ish cards, you can get any zombie out of your opponent's graveyard, as well as the fact that you are discarding a monster for his cost means you are potentially cheesing monsters into your graveyard with his effect and then summoning them back. However, I also must note, you cannot activate his effect if you don't have anything to target in either player's graveyard. Uh, you can't activate the effect by discarding a guy and then targeting the guy and summoning it back. If you had something else in your graveyard, you could discard the guy and then target the guy you discarded and summon it back. You just need a viable target to use the ignition effect. You don't actually have to use that viable target later. It's just that you need it there in order to actually be able to use this effect. So just, just so you kind of understand how the card works. Obviously, you don't need to talk much about Zombie Master. He's really good. He's, he's like wombo combo the card he just keeps going zombies recur from the grave he does exactly what they want in an earlier build of zombies this is exactly the card that would be your major playmaker and starter and extender he's really nifty that way and as far as tops are concerned uh many 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 uh mostly earlier in his history number three is necro guardina guardina guard Gardner. Necro Garden is a dark level 3, what is he, a warrior? Warrior effect monster with the following effect. During your opponent's turn, you can banish this card from your graveyard and negate the next attack your opponent makes. Despite being a dark monster, he found himself in Light Sworns most of the time, because they would just mill him off of one of the Light Sworn effects, he just end up in the grave right from the deck, and then later in the duel, when you really, really need him, you can banish him from your graveyard as a quick effect, to stop your opponent from potentially ending the duel or attacking a monster you need or some other reason why you wouldn't want your opponent to accomplish a very specific attack. Sure, nowadays we have Electromagnetic Turtle, which I think is a little bit better, but uh, Necro Garden has been pretty much the go-to attack negation staple of Light Swarns and other melee decks since he came out. And if you look at his tops, he's, he's, it's like the entire history since the time he came out and what is this, like 2007, I think is this set, all the way to like now he's seen play. So. He definitely has earned his spot high on the list. Necro Gardener. 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 
Ooh, number two, the controversial number two, Summoner's Art. Sum Summoner's Art. Summoner's Art's a normal spell card that reads, add one level five or higher normal monster from your deck to your hand. It's a Rhoda for big dumb beaters. Why is this card good? Well, um, it basically had no tops all the way from 2007 when it came out to 2014. What came out in 2014, you ask? Cleeforts. Started seeing play in Cleeforts and actually being in good decks that could win tournaments in Cleeforts. And then it's got a bajillion tops. It's, I've never seen so many all in Cleeforts. <laughs> It's like every single regional and YCS from 2014 to 2015, this card is in a top winning Cleeford deck. Towards the end of its life uh, and its use, it was in like late 2015, 2016, early, it was mostly actually metal foes, but those are drastically outnumbered by the, uh, uh, by the Cleeforts. The funny thing I did notice though, it was like laundry list of Cleeforts as far as the eye can see. Then we started getting like, you know, Magispector pen mag every once in a while, and then just a bunch of metal foes in Cosmo metal foes and things like that. And then in the sea of metal foes, there was like one Cleefort again. It was Skybase Turbo, <laughs> it was the name of the deck. I, just, I thought it was funny. All right, let's get on to the honorable mentions. Uh, there's actually, this was, a, this set's, it's not the worst set in the world. There's actually some decent cards in it. It's just that none of them are very remarkable. It's kind of like, there's like, so far we've, we've encountered like four types of sets. Broken, like magic rulers, like really, really bad, like uh, some of those really early GX sets where it was like half the cards and it was just really that dumb. And then you got these two in the middle where it's like, Boring bad and boring good, where it's okay, but nothing crazy, or it's bad, but not so bad it's fun. This is kind of like one of these ones. It's, it's, it's this one. But because of that, we actually managed to squeeze out two honorable mentions. So, first up is Ojaminite. Ojaminite. Why do I keep doing Why can't I s Ojaminite. This fusion, level 5 light warrior beast. It's a beast. You make it with two Ojama monsters. It's got 25... 100 defense and zero attack. Presumably you use Ojama Country to swap them. So, okay, sure. Select up to two of your opponent's unoccupied monster zones. They can't use them. Is it unoccupied? It doesn't say unoccupied. I just, it has to be though, right? Like you can't select a monster zone with some guy in it. Then, no, it's gotta be unoccupied. It doesn't say main monster zones, but also might not have had an errata sense. So I don't know. Uh, presumably you could target an extra Zach zone. So that's neat. Maybe, maybe. And if it is main monster zones, you just target the two that are diagonal from the extra deck zone. That pretty much cuts off most decks from actually being able to use anything of use. Your Mr. Our Boy points at nothing, baby. It's not a bad fusion monster. And with Ojama Country, it's got a big beater of an attack power. It's just the problem is it's stuck in Ojamas, which aren't the most broken thing in the world. They're okay though, especially now with the Chaz cards that came out. They're okay. Honorable mention. And this next card, I have literally no idea how to quantify. It's either the best card in the set the worst card in the set, or neither, or both. Snake Rain! I hate it being an honorable mention, but I think it needs to be, because it's either the worst card in the set, or the best card in the set. Snake Rain is a normal spell card that reads, discard one card, select four reptile monsters from your deck, send them to the graveyard. Holy crap, it's not even once per turn. It's basically a painful choice for an entire type of monster. How is this card not banned? What? Told you, best card in the set. Venomonaga doesn't have to worry about our attack power being low because you can mill a bunch of reptiles. Except there's like no decks in this game that are reptile and good and care about a bunch of reptiles in their graveyard. It doesn't have a home. Literally, there's nothing to mill with this card. Worst card in the set. It's got a broken effect and there's no home to use it. I don't know how to quantify that. Honorable mention. And the dishonorable mention today is Gift of Greed. Gift of Greed's a normal trap card that reads, your opponent draws two cards. Th that's it, that's all it does. Your, your opponent draws two. Holy crap, we've managed to find a pure, unadulterated Neg 3. Congratulations, you are one of the worst cards in the game. Ha 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 ha. Ah! Now you might say, you might say, the big brain play is to play this in something like Trickstar, so that Lycoris can do burn damage, and you could potentially mill your opponent out. And I would say to you, I would say to you, you're an idiot. Why would you ever risk giving your opponent two free cards for 400 burn damage, and uh, you know, 
Unless it mills them, unless that's their last two cards, you just gave them two new cards to figure out how to beat your Lycoris pass play you just made. Ugh. No, oh, but they like when you draw. Uh, yeah. uh, no, reincarnation not only just draws your, like, makes your opponent draw so they get a bunch of burn from Lycoris, it also banishes their hand and disrupts their plays. If anything, that's more important than the burn damage. The burn damage from Lycoris is a trolly little cherry on top that is actually not the point of the card. So you don't put crappy crap in your deck for the Lycoris burn. That's stupid. No, you put crap in your deck to disrupt your opponent's plays, and if they do a Lycoris burn on the top of it, then that's just getting you a little bit closer to winning a duel as well as screwing them up. So that's why Reincarnation is good, and this card is really, really terrible. You could play with Appropriate, I guess. I mean, they have to draw something else so you can draw, you can activate Appropriate, and then activate this, or you could activate two. <laughs> that's still like a neg one play, though. This card is terrible. And before we get to our number one spot, as always, my sponsor for this video is Metal Mouse. Ah uh, yes, if you want a custom cloth playmat, uh, use my promo code TROLLEDMETA, go over to Metamat's website, plug that semen demon in, and you can get like 10% off your order. They're the best mats ever, I loveies them very much. Leave a comment in this video if you want them to start making Daki Makara body pillows. It's a, it's a, it's kind of a, it's kind of a bet I got going right now. But anyway, let's get to number one. And number one in this set is the card, the great, the powerful, the legendary, the minus one. Uh, d double summon. Yes, double summon might be a neg one and bad card economy. And it's kind of a do nothing card. However, it is a normal spell card with the following effect. You can conduct two normal summons this turn. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Not just one. <laughs> Gotta have that problem solving text. Yes, it bestows you a second normal summon. And if your deck is like very, very, very heavy on normal summons, or it's like something like Gemini's and needs to normal summon a monster twice, having a card that lets you do that is key to your strategy. Not only that, but uh, if you can manage to gain some advantage off of the second normal summon, it can outweigh the loss of advantage there is by playing double summon. Something like uh, Spirals, for instance. Uh, they are a wonderful, spammy, crazy Link deck. However, they live or die by being able to get double Helix on board. And if you can't get two Spiral monsters on board to make double Helix, you pretty much end your turn. That is dumb. And in its prime, people were running double summon simply as another means just Oh my god, I don't care how, I need to get two, two uh, spirals on board so I can make my stupid extra link. So that, that's why you, you don't care about the neg one, because you end up going plus four by the end of the turn, so it was losing a spell to win the duel such a problem. And as far as tops go, it's uh, got probably more than uh, art, and it's also just more spread out through the history of... of it's pretty much saw play up until now from when it came out so it, it's it's it sees play all the time it's it's a decent card it's not the greatest card in the world but it's probably the best card in the set so good on you double summon anyway guys that was whatever the fuck this set is called tactical evolution i think t-a-e-b hope you guys enjoyed the new way of sorting the list i think it's a little more objective it's a little more fair i would say and anyway guys, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and remember guys, if you don't troll the matter who will, it's getting hot in here. I will see how see you guys next time. The Destiny Board tells me that you should subscribe to the channel, or you can watch some of these other videos. Now excuse me, my Millennium Ring has detected another Millennium item. Oh, it's it's just Merrick. Akora! Did you remember to get milk? We're out of milk. This milk is bad. It was terrible.